What's up creators, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes. Today we're returning to the Air Like series where we break down the styles of famous YouTubers, photographers, creators, movies, try to replicate that color grading in post edition with the only purpose of learning how to color grade. Now, the style that we're gonna replicate today is not of an individual, instead it's just an analog film, which is the Kodak Gold 200. So this negative film stock is very popular and widely used because it has some decent contrast, some decent latitude or dynamic range, but also because it adds this very nice yellow or orangey warm cast into the entire image. It's very appealing, particularly in broad daylight photography, but also in golden hour where those yellows start to combine with the sunlight and create this golden look into your images. So today what we're gonna do first of all is briefly analyze some examples of photos taken with this film so we know what we have to do in the post edited department. So we, once we have that knowledge, we're gonna jump into Lightroom, apply that theory into practice and edit a photo, create a preset out of it and see how it performs in other scenarios. So let's jump into it. Okay, so this first image that we have over here is a very natural looking image. I don't see any post uh, editing or any it changes in the development, so it's a very natural representation of what a Kodak Gold 200 image looks when it's correctly exposed. So this image was shot in broad daylight and this is where the style really shines. Now, first of all, let's pay attention to the exposure and contrast and the overall dynamic range of this film stock. Most analog films preserve very well the highlights, but then in the shadows, some of them vary in terms of contrast. So right here, the highlights very well preserved. Then also we have loads of information in the midtones, but then when it comes to the shadows, the lower part of the curve, we can see how there's some loss of information. In the door, in the house, in the background, we can basically see no detail. Also in the tire of the truck and down below, we don't see any detail of the suspension or the drive system or between the wheel or anything like that. So we're losing some information in the darkest parts on our image. And also the blacks, well, they're not pure blacks. They're a bit raised, they're a bit grayed out. So we have to do that in the tone curve. Then when it comes to color, this film stock has very natural colors. Um, but with the exception that we're adding that warm cast. So by adding this warm cast into the entire image, you can see how the whites, how the highlights, the shadows and the midtones, all of it has this very yellow cast. And um, what we're doing right here is just reducing a bit of the dominance of the cool tone. So with this film stock, it's typical that you're gonna see some skies uh, which are a bit more desaturated. Also the sea is gonna be a bit desaturated and also the greens. Basically all the cool tones are gonna be drawn back just a bit and the warm tones are gonna take a bit more relevance. So we're gonna do that in camera calibration. Now in this portrait at golden hour at sunset, it's where I think this uh, Kodak Gold 200 really shines. As you can see, the oranges from the sky, from the sunset is combining with the warm tones that this film stock has naturally. And as a result, we have these very beautiful golden skin tones. They're not anything completely natural. It doesn't look like she has jaundice or anything like that but it is a very appealing look. Now, just as the name says, this film stock has a 200 ISO, therefore it's meant to be shot in well-lit environments. That's why it really starts to shine at midday or even at golden hour, but anything with lower exposure from that, maybe after sunset, it starts to fall apart quite a bit. Also, if you underexpose your film. So it's not the best technical representation of the film stock when you shoot underexposed, but a lot of photographers really like this look because it has a lot of more, a lot more contrast and the yellow start to become a lot more saturated. So here we have some examples. We have this image of New York and notice how everything's a bit more punchy, a bit more contrasty. Uh, the shadows and the mid -tone lose a bit more detail and we have more golden tones. Then over here, you can see similar representation where those yellows start to appear and have a little, lot more dominance. And notice how the shadows in the cars are a lot more harsh, a lot more contrasty. Also, if you shoot in, in maybe an overcast day underexposed, you achieve images like this one where everything is basically painted yellow, but we have more of a punchy and dramatic look. So creators, I'm gonna stop right here because otherwise I'll be talking for hours. Let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. But before that, as always, I'm gonna remind you that this preset that we're gonna create today, I'm gonna add it to the Airlike preset pack V3, the third season of the Airlike series, and also the third preset pack. So in that preset pack, slowly, we're gonna add all the presets that we create in this year for the Airlike series. So if you wanna check it out, link up here and skip all my tutorials. Also, if you're only interested in the analog styles, either from this preset pack or the Airlike V2, check out the analog preset pack, link up here as well. In that preset pack, I'm just gonna extract all the analog and film look styles that we create and put them into that preset pack in case you're only interested in those presets. So link up there to my shop. If you can support me, I'd be very thankful. That's the best way you can support me to ensure I can continue to do videos for you guys. So having said that, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. 
Okay, creators, once in Lightroom, I have this little collection set up. I think it's the same collection that we created for the Portra 400 and 800 tutorial, but it does work because we have several photos in different lighting scenarios for film photography. We have these ones at broad daylight, then we have some that are a bit underexposed, and then we have some in nighttime photography that we won't be using for this tutorial. So I'm just going to select this photo. Once again, I always use this photo um, because it does have a very even exposure with a lot of colors, and we can test out all the settings that we're going to apply into this preset. So you're probably a bit tired about this photo, but we're just going to use it to create the base preset and then we're going to apply it to different scenarios. Now starting out, first of all, to create the gold 200, we want to achieve the exposure and contrast and then we're going to move down to the color grading. Now for exposure and contrast, I use the basic corrections that includes highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, the presence tab and the tone grid. Now you may be wondering why I didn't say exposure and contrast and that's because exposure and contrast, just like, just like temperature and tint, I like to omit them from the preset because these are the four values that I use to compensate any mesh shooting on field. So let's say maybe I'm editing this photo and as you can see this one is very poorly shot on field. So uh, in this case I would apply a preset and then I would use the exposure and contrast and the tint and temperature to compensate. So I will raise the exposure and maybe add a bit more contrast so we correct the image, but it's not included in the preset. So this, this, this adjustment isn't applied into all the photos that we apply the preset to. So let's go back to our original image and let's start off by creating the exposure and contrast. First of all, highlights, we want to bring them towards the negatives. If we go towards the positives, we end up with clipping and overexposure. We want to do the opposite and preserve the best we can the highlights. So just below the minus 40 is going to be enough. Immediately we can notice how we have loads more information in the bright parts of the image. Then we're going to do the opposite with the shadows, go towards the positives, just to achieve a bit more detail in the midtones. Then the whites, in this case, I'm going to leave them like that. Uh, the whites will control the brightest parts on our image, but I'm just going to leave it at zero. We are going to move down to the tone curve further along and affect the whites. And the blacks, in this case, I'm just going to pull them back ever so slightly just around a minus 10% just to retain those pure blacks. Okay, next we're gonna move down to Tone Curve. Now the Tone Curve is a very powerful tool and very universal. You can find it in all photo and video editing softwares, whether it be DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Photoshop, all of them use the Tone Curve because it allows us to control the exposure and contrast. Now, I already made a tutorial in depth about this tool. Link up here, the video is gonna appear in the banner. So if you wanna master that tool, check out that video and as we move further along in the editing process in this video we cover different tools like color mixer like hsl color grading and camera calibration their respective video will pop up when we reach that tool also up there in the in this tutorial i'm not going to go too into detail into any of those tools now first of all right here we're going to preserve a bit more of the bright parts of our image this point all the way at the right will control our highlights and whites so i'm just going to drag it down vertically something around these lines. If you're not too sure where I place this point, you can check out the input right here, which is the X axis. And then the Y axis or vertical axis is this one. The output is 232. Now I'm gonna create a point in the midtones and just drag it a little bit closer to the diagonal. The values are gonna be 148 and 143. Next, let's move the blacks. Now, this point at the bottom left corner will control the darkest parts on our image. Now, as we saw in some examples, we had some grayed out blacks. They're not completely black. So in order to achieve that, what we have to do is pull this point towards the positives in the vertical axis. And notice if I go further up, our blacks turn into gray and basically we don't have any pure blacks. Now, this is way too high. I would recommend values from five to 10%, no, nothing too high, just to gray them up just a bit. But in this case, I'm going to do something completely opposite. What I'm going to do is move it in the X axis. What I'm going to do is just create a lot more contrast and loss of information in the shadows. And that's, that's something that we saw in most of the examples that the shadows in a certain point when everything is becoming too dark, we're losing a lot of detail. So I'm not going to go all the way to the minus 22. This is too high, maybe around the 8%, something subtle. But in this way, we're just creating a little bit of loss of information in the darkest parts on our image. As you can see, the tone curve is just dropping below the diagonal right here in the darkest points on our image. Now, as a result, our image, it's looking too contrasty, too punchy, in particular in the shadows. So what we're going to do is use the dehaze tool in the presence tab. Now, the dehaze tool is originally created to aid landscape photographers that maybe want to capture the ideal shot, but maybe it was a hazy day or a misty day and the haze will allow us to cut down all that haze and create a clearer image and that's towards the positives. 
Now, towards the negatives, this is how I like to use it in more creative purposes. If I go towards the negatives, as you can see, the highlights have this glowing or very misty effect around them. Only the highlights, if we move all the way to minus 100, obviously it spills out into the rest of the image. But it's similar to the effect of halation or the diffusion effect from mist filters, uh, somewhere in between. It's a bit of artificial, but it will allow us to create flatter exposure, but also to create this glowing effect, this golden glowing effect around the highlights. So in this case, I'm gonna go around the minus 30. It's just gonna be enough. Uh, I normally don't go too high, but for this case, it just looks fantastic. Notice how now the highlights have this little glowing effect around them. And also as a side process, we also evened out a bit of the exposure and just uh, we are just losing information in the dark spots on our image. Meanwhile, the midtones are very well preserved. This is before the haze and this is after and it just compensates and balances out our exposure and contrast. Okay, so that's it for exposure and contrast. Now let's move down to the color grading. Now we're gonna start off by using camera calibration just to adjust the colors into the correct palette of the Gold 200. Now camera calibration is a tool that allows us to control basically the equivalent to the color science of our images. We can basically alter every single pixel because every single pixel is composed in the higher percentage or lower percentage of the red, the green, and the blue, the RGB. So right here we have the red, the green, and the primary, and we can alter the values to alter the overall palette on our image. So starting out, we want the reds not towards the purples. We want them towards the brick-like colors, a bit more yellowish. So I'm just gonna go around the plus 15, and then the saturation, obviously we don't wanna go too high, otherwise we have a very saturated and very HDR-like image. Obviously this is way too high. I'm just gonna go around the 6% just to make them a little bit more dominant. Now the green primary, I'm just gonna go towards the positives ever so slightly. And then the saturation just around the plus 5% is gonna be enough. This will just alter a bit of the vegetation, just making it a bit more vibrant and less dull. Then finally, the blue primary, it would be tempting to go towards the negatives in the tonality. And as you can see, we start to achieve those aqua or those teal-like colors in the shadows. And that's not what we want. This is completely unnatural. The gold 200 basically does not have a lot of aqua. So I'm just gonna reset this value. But what I am gonna do is change the saturation. Why? Because I want to alter the yellows. Now, you may be wondering, you're moving the blue slider why are you altering the yellows it's because camera calibration works with color balance and color contrast and complementary colors so as you can see in the color wheel we have the blues and what we have direct opposite in the color wheels we have the yellows and oranges so by altering the blues we're going to alter yes every single color uh, more specifically we're going to alter more the blues but also we're going to alter in the same percentage the direct opposites which are the yellow so as you can see if i pull the saturation of the blue primary up Notice how the leaves, how anything that contains a lot of yellow starts to be altered. We can basically add more vibrance into the oranges and into the yellows by moving the blue primary. So I'm just going to go ever so slightly towards the positives just to make the yellows a bit more vibrant, a bit more dominant. Now, by doing this move with the blue primary, I am introducing a bit more saturation into the blues. So I'm going to compensate that in HSL. So we're going to move up to HSL. And right here in saturation, we're just gonna move a bit of the blues towards the negative just to desaturate them and make them a, li a little bit less dominant. We saw this in the skies of most of the photo examples. Uh, the skies were a bit thinned down and, and drawn back the saturation. Uh, so just gonna move it towards the negatives, just around the minus 35 and also the aquas. And this won't affect the skies, but it will affect the bodies of water uh, if there's any in our images. So as you can see right here, we're just basically taking away the blues that we added in camera calibration whilst returning the vibrance in the yellows. Okay, next up, let's add that warm cast into the entirety of the image and that's gonna be done in color grading. Now color grading, as you can see, has three wheels. It was previously known as split toning, but now we have a third wheel. That's why you can't split the image in half. So we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And in these wheels, we can add a color. And also we have the global color wheel all the way to the right and basically covers all the three wheels simultaneously. So I'm interested in the global color wheel, so I'm just gonna add a warm tone over here. The hue is gonna be 44, and obviously the saturation is way too high. I'm gonna leave it around the 10%. Now immediately you can notice how the image is warmer. So we can deactivate color grading by clicking this button, this is off. 
and this is on it just adds this very subtle warm or creamy color into the entirety of the image now you may be wondering what's the difference between adding this warm cast into color grading than adding it into the temperature tab over here in the white balance now the problem with the white balancing tools over here particularly in raw photography is that these values that you see over here are going to vary from photo to photo maybe you shot it in a different white balance maybe you shot it in auto white balance automatically the camera is moving the white balance and the value is going to be different so if i introduce here into this preset the value of 6000 kelvin it will render this way in this image but it maybe it looks cooler in another one or it looks a bit warmer on another one so you can trust temperature in um, raw photography you have to use it basically just to compensate and to correct your image not as a basis for creative purposes so instead i like to use coloring where the values never alter this 44 and this 10 in saturation is going to remain the same throughout all the presets and independently in which photo you apply them to i hope that made sense now let's move down to the shadows because i did notice i didn't mention this in the analysis but i did mention a slight green cast in the shadows and this is basically just uh, something to give this is this analog look most of the kodak uh, film stocks have this very subtle green cast with the exception of the portrait 800 that has a very big um, tint added so i'm just going to add a bit of green into the shadows obviously this saturation is way too high the hue is going to be 91 and the saturation is going to be very subtle maybe around the five percent and it's basically unnoticeable you can zoom in into the shadows over here i'm gonna deactivate it this is before this is after it's barely noticeable but it is there and it's gonna be more apparent when we apply the preset into underexposed images because the shadows are gonna be a bit more dominant okay next i'm gonna move down to the effects because it is film photography it does have a very organic and very beautiful film grain um, Opiate that in this preset in particular the Kodak 200 it's very subtle and, and it's a very fine film grain so if we zoom in we can see that this image is very digital it's completely sharp we don't see any noise so what I'm going to do is just add a bit of amount in the grain it's going to be 29 and then basically I'm just going to leave the 25 and the 50 in the size and the roughness just like that and we have this very nice texture if we zoom in but if we zoom out it's basically unnoticeable it just adds a bit of organic grain into the image nothing more so this is the before and after our original image and now our final product. As you can see, we have more information in the midtones, but in the shadows, we are still losing a lot of contrast and that's just what we wanted. Then the highlights, we have very well preserved highlights compared to the original and have that overall warm cast added with the analog tones. So we're gonna save this preset and apply it to different scenarios because well, this photo right now, it's very colorful helps us to create the preset but it doesn't render the colors as i want them. so i'm just going to save it over here hit the plus sign on the presets create a preset and we're going to name it and remember that white balance exposure and contrast we want to r mark them just as detail lens corrections transform and hdr and make sure camera calibration and grain are marked okay how about over here this image is underexposed so it should work perfectly right here so as you can see i already added into the like v3 and we apply it and this is the before and after and it's looking fantastic. You can notice how the warm tones are added into the entirety of the image. We have that warm cast in the sky. And we have loads more information in the sky, obviously, compared to the original. And here we have the before and after. And it's very evident how the original image was very cool. And now we have this very nice warm image. And the greens are working fantastically. They're a bit more like what you saw in the example images. And of course, you can play around with the exposure in case you want to return a bit more information. As you can see, exposure and contrast, we didn't include them in the preset, so they're at zero. You can just bring back a bit of the exposure and have a very nice image representing the gold 200. How about in this one, very sunny day at midday, let's apply the preset. And there we have the before and after. Notice how the blues are a bit nailed back. Not completely, it's not completely unnatural, but they are drawn back. And instead we have this very nice warm cast that's combining with those colors. Greens, I think, are working perfectly. Then we have the reds a bit more towards the oranges. Not too much, but it is there, as we saw in the example of the Coca-Cola van. But in general terms, it looks quite nice with that warm cast. Now, in this image, you can see what the dehaze does. Uh, right here, the preset has been applied and it's very warm compared to the original. And it's looking fantastic, very retro. I, I, in particular, I like the reds. But notice the difference when I deactivate the value that we added to the haze. This is without the haze and it's very punchy, very sharp and contrasty. And then we apply the dehaze 
and just adds this glowing effect into the bright spots of the image. This will work perfectly if you're shooting models in direct sunlight. Maybe the sun is creeping in through the window and then you can see that glowing effect on her skin. So it's very, uh, very appealing for female models when you apply some dehaze. So this project will work perfectly for that. Now in images like this one, which are a bit more in the contrasty side, I think we're missing a bit of saturation in the color grading. So let's create a little variant, which is a bit more punchy for the sunset. So I'm gonna move down to the color grading. And what I'm gonna do is very simple guys. I'm just gonna select the global color wheel I'm going to copy these exact values and just double down on the other wheel. So I'm just going to right click, copy settings. I'm going to apply the same settings onto the highlights, paste settings, and also into the midtones and the greens. We're going to leave them like that in the shadows. And notice immediately how the image just comes to life. It just looks fantastic. Uh, it's very similar to the example images. So I'm going to save this preset as a variant. So let's see how the presets perform in this image with high contrast. This is very similar to several of the example images we have loss of information in the shadows and even some loss of information due to the contrast in the bright parts of the image. So first of all, let's apply the Kodak 200 the base preset and it just looks incredible in this image notice how we have loads more information in the dark parts of the image we have that retained contrast that we were looking for and we have that warm cast added even in parts of the image that were completely blue or with lacking we have that warm cast and it's looking fantastic and then we add the sunset version the second that we created and just adds a bit more drama into the image and it just works perfectly again another image in contrasty situations so let's apply first of all kodak gold it looks beautiful on this Im in this image. It just looks fantastic. The greens are looking vibrant, saturated, uh, yellowish, perfect. And then let's apply the sunset version. This adds a bit more drama into the image. Finally, let's look at skin tone. So let's apply Kodak 200 first of all. Notice immediately how we have a bit more glow into the skin tone, just make them a bit more lighter and reducing all the imperfections of the skin. Uh, he's not a female model, but uh, it works quite well. Uh, have that warm cast and the overall contrast. I'm very happy with the contrast that we achieved. We're retaining a lot of detail in the midtones, but we are maintaining that contrast in the shadows. And then the sunset just adds a bit more warmth into the image. So I'm quite happy with these results, guys. There you have it. This is how I would achieve the Kodak Gold 200 applied into digital photography. Now, remember that these two presets that we created are in the Edelite preset pack V3 and the analog preset pack. Link up there to my shop. In case you want to check it out, I'll be very thankful if you can support me in any manner through there, even buying the cheapest preset pack. Um, that would help me quite a lot. So that's all for today, guys. Like the video, subscribe, all those things. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.